Okay, welcome to my video about the Chaosolator 2. I ordered uh, one and it's uh, just reached North America April 2012. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it's uh, much more sleek and it looks uh, smaller than the original Chaosolator 2. Like there's the, this is the original Chaosolator which I'll call the, K the K1. And this is the Chaosolator 2, the screen uh, the touchpad on the Castellator 2 is about 80% the size of the original. Uh, there's no more knob. There's a nice uh, slide bar instead. Um, to load up the batteries on a Castellator 2, look for the button at the very bottom and press it to unlock the mechanism, and then you get the uh, um, black Castellator 2 out of its shell out of its yellow shell and then you can put in your batteries you can also put in a micro SD card in here turn off the power to change the card or put one in for the first time but it's a micro SD card up to 16 gigabytes in size very small and you can use that to save your chaos later patterns and audio and then slide the uh, calculator back into its shell front first and then press down on the uh, bottom to click it in. Uh, the calculator has uh, several buttons. There's two sound banks, Roman numeral 1 and 2, and there's a bank for selecting the sound, selecting the arpeggiator, uh, a function button for different functions, and a delete button to delete part or all of your loops. Uh, turn it on by pressing the power switch on the top right. Just flicking the switch won't work. You have to hold it down for a moment. And there it goes. It gives you the Chaos Later logo and a very nice information screen. Uh, now, one thing to know is that you should read your manual very carefully because there is a function menu but there are also some quick keys that you can use you have a total of 150 sounds uh, or sound programs in the chaos later uh, you've got uh, and if you want to move between them you can use the slide bar and just move your finger and the selections slide very quickly across if you want to step up you press the plus sign on the right if you want to step down press the minus sign on the left but did you also know that you can, um, instead of going through all 150 of them, you can go through them a whole lot faster if you press the sound key down, keep the sound key depressed, and press plus or minus, and you're going to cycle through uh, sets of sounds one category at a time. You've got your lead sounds, LD. You've got your acoustic sounds, AC. BS is the bass sounds. CH is the chord sounds. SE is sound effects, DR is drum sounds, and drum kits have uh, four columns of sound, so it, you know you can vary the attack and you've got four different kinds of drum sounds uh, in each kit. Sometimes you have eight. Uh, then PT is uh, the, uh, I don't know, parts or rhythms, and uh, you have many more than in the uh, K1, and you go right back to the leads again. Uh, so don't forget pressing and holding the sound key helps you cycle through entire sets of sounds much more quickly to find what you want. Um, the arpeggiator works the same way. If you press the ARP button, the arpeggiator turns on and the arpeggiator turns off. You can dig into the function menu to actually change the type of arpeggiator, but the quick command for that is you hold down the arpeggiator and then you slide or you uh, step up across 50 uh, arpeggiator patterns. Here they're numbered 1 to 50. It's not like the old K1 which was 0 to 49. It's 1 to 50. And same thing for the sounds. There's no 0 sounds or 0 arpeggiator pattern. Uh, so don't forget the quick commands though. You generally hold down a button and then you uh, use the slide. Uh, so before I introduce the sounds or anything like that, uh, I'm going to show you the functions if I can, and I'll try to get a close-up and focus. For a close-up, you see the nice uh, 
you see the nice uh, detailed uh, K oscillator 2 display you've got an indicator for your battery an indicator for whether you have a memory card you have a uh, uh, set of lights here. You always see your beats per minute on the top left side of the screen. It defaults to 120 beats per minute. You got the uh, number of the sound program, the name of the sound program, and then at the bottom you usually have a guide to show you um, the current state of the slide bar and how to use it. Generally you can press plus or minus or slide in the middle or sometimes you press the middle for uh, a button. If you press the function key on the uh, top right, first function is the beats per minute. You can slide to change the beats per minute in units of ones. You only press the plus or minus if you want to change by tenths of a beat per minute. So otherwise you can slide to the whole number of beats that you want. Let's say I want a hundred. Press function again and then you go to the key. You can change the key uh, over a range of two octaves from lower C to middle C to uh, upper C and here it shows you uh, uh, sharp notes so it says C sharp instead of the old C plus on the K1 it's a sh it is a sharp sign and you gotta work out the equivalent flat signs yourself in your head um, now you notice that I press the function key to advance a function if you want to go backwards in the functions the thing to know is you hold down the sound key and press the function key and if I hold it down and press it once I go back to beats per minute again um, so don't forget to press and hold the sound key again uh, makes you go uh, cycle through things backwards uh, so we had beats per minute is the first function the key is the second function next is the scale um, it has uh, pretty much the same scales as the K1 but it graphically shows you what the notes are on uh, piano keys and what uh, what key you're in um, Next, after the scale, is uh, the note range. Uh, here you have adjustable note range, and that's good because the uh, uh, screen, the uh, touchpad, I mean, is smaller than before. Um, so you can select a note range. The program is the default uh, setting for that particular program, but if you want, you can set one octave, two octaves, three octaves, four octaves, or the maximum range possible uh, for a program. Uh, so let's say I stick it, uh, leave it at the default program settings. Then you get to ARP patterns. You got types 1 to 50, as I said. But as I said, if you're in, if you're not in the function menu, the quick way to do it is just hold down the ARP and use the slider to select the, or, or the steps to select the arpeggiator pattern that you want. And it graphically shows you what the beat pattern is for that arpeggiator pattern. Next comes the arpeggiator time. You can actually uh, vary how long the arpeggiator note um, is sustained. If you go up to 100, positive 100%, it's a legato. In other words, very slow, and it's it's not uh, um, going to change at all. If you go to minus 100%, you get very sharp staccato sounds, very, very short. Often you can't hear it at all, depending on the program. Uh, so you can vary things. It defaults to 0%, so that's neither plus nor minus anything it's just the default setting next is the arpeggiator swing um, I don't understand too much about this but the instructions which you should read very carefully the instructions say that um, this basically changes the regular arpeggiator into a sort of lop sh lopsided shuffle pattern so it's sort of a bluesy type effect uh, so you can play around with that when you have an arpeggiator pattern next is loop length it defaults to four you can slide to change the loop length up or down of course I prefer eight and you'll notice that there's a loop length for loop one and then press the function button again to adjust the loop length for loop two okay and you'll see a little graphical display about how many loops you have one very short or very many and um, the beats will count with little lights in these little boxes that move from the edge to the center uh, for each of the two loop patterns. They are they are synchronized together, uh, but you can store different things in the two different sound banks. Uh, and you'll see that in action, I hope. Uh, next function is the loop fader. So you can fade from one sound bank to the next, and you can center it. Again, you use the slider, very convenient, and it centers very easily back to the center if you want. Uh, next is the loop save and load functions. 
Um, you can save your patterns. They're basically saved as sounds. They're not as MIDI or any kind of command patterns at all. You just save it as sounds and you can recall them. Uh, so be sure to save a good pattern before you turn the power switch off. Uh, continuing, uh, there's the master recorder. You can record any kind of audio, so you can record your performance live with this. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, then there's an audio player. You can play back any save things in uh, your uh, your memory card. It will only play WAV format files, uh, so it will play any songs you store as one of the loops. Um, or you can fade from a song to your actual playing, so you can sort of mix the two that way. Uh, but it has to be a WAV file. I don't know why it doesn't take MP3s yet. Maybe that's for the future. Um, the And finally you press function, you go back to beats per minute again. Uh, one thing in the functions is utilities. Okay, so this opens up into a complete set of menus. Press uh, the slide bar center to start the utility menu and here you can set the date and time and press the function for the next utility things um, select your battery type you can have alkali batteries or nickel metal hydride batteries so select the correct battery type that you've got in uh, the chaos later or use the uh, uh, AC adapter you can get an, a multiple adapter or something sold separately oops I'm out of the utility again I'm coming back in um, next utility is power saving now every time you switch the Chaos later off and turn it on again. It always goes to power saving off. I wish it would save. I wish it would stay. It would stay on on and the uh, the display dims and it saves power that way. Uh, it also uh, reduces the speakers. You do have built-in speakers here um, if you're not connected to headphones or my uh, computer like I'm, I am now. Uh, going back again. Oh, it came out again. I have to get back to the utilities. Next is the auto power shutoff. After four hours, you can disable or enable it. Press one side or the other. Um, display brightness. Well, I have power saving, so it defaults to a dim setting. Um, the external microphone setting, you can set it for stereo or mono, depending on what your microphone is. Uh, when you first plug in a microphone, you can uh, adjust the microphone volume. Actually, the first thing it will ask you is whether you want to power the microphone with the K-Oscillator or if it has its own power, so make the correct selection there. Um, so I really don't like that you have to keep flicking the power saving on every time you turn it on, but don't forget to run through the utility functions um, every time you begin the card test. That's to test your memory card, make sure it's compatible, and to format it. Uh, if, it if your uh, micro SD card was used before, be sure to format it for the K oscillator. Uh, and completing the utilities section if I cycle through again if you press sound in the cycle it goes backwards so if you press sorry if you press sound on the function button it actually goes backwards through the functions instead of forwards uh, then there's card formatting so you can test the card then f make sure it's compatible with the chaos later and then format it um, there's a pad calibration which is very useful if you have very large fingers it will uh, try to calibrate the small pad for you you just run your finger along the whole edge of the pad and the next step is to run it across the slider so it'll sort of adjust for the size of your fingers I guess so that's done and software updates there are no software updates at the moment but if there are in the future you can uh, download a file and then uh, into your memory card and update it and uh, I think that's about it for utilities so read the instructions carefully because there are a couple of uh, quick commands to get through things more quickly that you could never guess at, uh, which I've tried to demonstrate right now. Is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and if you're familiar with the old Chaos Later, you'll know that the XY pad has many different functions depending on the sound that you're on most of the time but not always uh, the pad uh, the X direction will control the note that you're on and with the chaos later 2 uh, you actually see a very tiny display what the note is every time right on the top center and show you the note and the octave that you're in uh, so it always shows you that it always shows you the beats per minute and you can cycle through the different sounds 
when you're getting familiar with the chaos later be sure to go and test all the corners of the pad the top part bottom part left and right and make sure of any special uh, uh, sounds that you get try to get familiar with how the sound changes uh, most of the time but not always the note varies according to your left and right motion and the quality or filth there's usually a filter or sound effect that varies as you move your finger up and down on this one there isn't anything what about this one there's a, there's a good example bleep lead number five so you get a, a filter effect with an up and down motion of your finger so you got to study and get familiar with each uh, uh, kind of sound um, you don't have just leads and acoustic and bass sounds and and uh, chord sounds you get various sound effects you also get drum kits and usually there's four columns along the chaos later for each kind of sound and the attack varies uh, the higher up you move On some drum kits you get uh, the uh, touchpad is divided into eight instead of four, so here's a set of tom-toms. I count eight there. Uh, and then you get to the last section which is parts, which is like rhythms, so uh, it goes through a complete loop and it plays a rhythm. And again, the quality of the rhythm varies, the, there's variations depending on what part of the pad you're touching. So move your finger around uh, to the beat and see what you can get. Okay, and similar to the, uh, to the Chaosolator Pro, which has four sound banks, if you press and hold a sound bank, you're recording uh, what you get. So I can start a, a rhythm or start laying a rhythm. Uh, and the first thing I'll uh, lay down is the rhythm track. So I press it down and hold. that it uh, the little display I'm sorry I have to focus but the little display has little dots which are moving from the edge to the center it's eight beats and you also get a volume indicator which might be important if you're mixing or, or uh, uh, fading one to the other now if I want to go backwards I can step backwards to the drum kits so I just have to press sound and the minus sign to get to the first drum kits and try to add something interesting. not the best effort but that's just to demonstrate a, a first overlay and if you don't want to complicate your sound bank one too much you can add something in the second sound bank as well like a chord sound
it, I can uh, I can delete a loop on the fly by holding delete. And it last. Well, actually, I don't hold delete. I press delete once, and it'll ask me which of the loops I want to delete. So I press two, and it's gone. I can press one, and it's gone. Or I can actually hold delete and press the key to delete just part of the loop. See, so it deleted half my loop because that's what I wanted. And then I stopped the loop. Okay, so um, that's just an overview of the basic functions of the K-Oscillator. And uh, in my next video, I hope to just demonstrate all 150 sound programs and uh, try to explore each corner of the sound pad, as I said, and try to bring out any unusual features. Thank you very much for watching.